Mask gunmen walk freely on the streets of Imo State Capital, Oweri, after attacking a police station. Some residents praise them, while others express fear and worry. And politician Ned Woko denies allegations of land grabbing by his kinsmen in Dumuje town in Delta State. We'll continue our conversation this morning about what truly happened. We'll also be having another conversation about girl child education and how it can lead to the uplifting of Nigerian women. We're glad to have you once again join us on a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbawan. Thank you very much for joining us. Middle of the week edition of The Breakfast. It looked like it was going to be a rainy morning uh, here in Lagos, but uh, I think it changed its mind. Mm. But anyway, well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for waking up with Don't us. Don't mention hump day, please. It is hump <laughs> oh day. My God. Uh, officially hump day. And, uh, you know, from here, of course, we slide all, all the way down to the weekend once again. How are you? I shouldn't have reminded you. I'm sorry. How are I actually re remembered, but you know, I was just gonna maybe let it, it slide yeah. today. Exactly. It's all right. So, um, our top trending uh, stories today: uh, frightening, frightening, frightening. First of all, a young guy with so much potentials cost us so much pride, now causing us so much embarrassment, and then the security security situation. Where do you want to start? Um, so, I think I'll start with the security situation. Okay. Um, you know, there's been reactions to this, you know, and a lot of them I agree with. Um, I, th I think I saw Juliet Kegel um, mention, you know, how it was entirely wrong, you know, that we're seeing people uh, cheering you know, these, you know, some, someone said on gone known men. Um, that's, on I, I hear that's what they're called <laughs> in, in the South, on so, gone known men. <laughs> so... Um, you know, if, if, we're, if we're taking this very seriously, it should be something that, you know, should be condemned outrightly. But what's the issue, um, though? So I, I saw videos. I saw some of those clips. You know, there's one clip where someone was scared, you know, so they were walking, you know, by her house and mm -hmm. she was making a video. Um, she was really, really frightened. And then there's another video where... Uh, there's people who are cheering them on, you know, and then some other guy was making a video, you know, showing, you know, these guys walking along the street. And there's okay. a third video, um, you know, where this time, the first two, I can't confirm where they were. Mm -hmm. There's a third one, you know, where, where they were on a, on a vehicle um, about, you know, driving off, you know, and then there's people also, you know, around them Hailing cheering them. them on, you know, exactly. Um, which is which is frightening. It's frightening because I, I don't think those people who are cheering them on understand what exactly uh, they are doing. I think that they... Um, have gotten lost, you know, in some, you know, type of euphoria or some just completely lost um, and need to realize that at the end, when these people are done with um, the police stations and the INEC offices, there's, you know, nothing else to do. They're not going to hang their guns in their living rooms and take pictures. They're going to come mm. for them. Um, but at the same time, it's a reminder that, you know, the security architecture in the Southeast is currently, maybe not just in the Southeast, all of the country is currently very, very weak. Um, we have continued to ask, who are these people? You know, are they, you know, faceless? Are they invincible? Do they mm -hmm. appear, you know, right in front of the gates of these police stations and INEC offices, mm -hmm. wreak havoc, and then disappear? No, they don't. They live in these communities. They maybe live in the outskirts. They come in, you know, do whatever dirty work that they came to do, and then they, you know, go back to, into hiding. Why is it so difficult for the security agencies to find these people? If it is so easy for them to drive around, you know, where or drive around anywhere in the southeast, you know, holding their weapons, then why is it so hard for the police to, you know, arrest them or to, you know, find them? Why is it so difficult, you know, after all these weeks, months, really, of us hearing these attacks every day? To, um, you know, sadly, you know, you might wake up tomorrow morning and hear of another one. Um, you know, which has been attacked again. I think I saw mm -hmm. reports of Enugu, you know, yesterday. Yes. Um, you might wake up tomorrow morning and hear of another one again that has um, 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 happened. So why is it so hard? You know, and what is wrong with the people of the Southeast um, cheering this, these people on? I'm not going to say, you know, general. Um, I'm not going to generalize this. Not everybody in the Southeast. There's a lot of people in the Southeast who find this disgusting and also yes. think, think that people should be arrested and should be prosecuted, should be mm. in jail. Um, but, you know, seeing those video clips just really, really makes me sad. Um, what exactly are you cheering? You know, hmm. what are you excited about? The, the, the criminals walking around the streets, attacking your security yeah. your institutions, attacking, attacking your um, INEC offices. What exactly makes you happy okay, about Okay, so that? I think this particular situation, you know, 
would, would need to do more digging to find out exactly what the motives of these guys are. And I ask, I say this because I'm, I'm going to lead to what made me make that statement. But the fact that people can take guns and walk freely on the streets, and we're seeing two sides of a coin, some people cheering them, people who are holding guns and just walking on the streets. Some people cheering them and say, oh, this is giving me some sort of protection. And on the other side of the coin, people are saying, oh, I'm scared. How have we gotten this bad? That we don't even have police stations or police officers who can protect us. We're now having people roam the streets for whatever reason. So there's the fear part and there's the cheering part. The reason why I won't jump into conclusion is because of this. During the NSAS protests, right, there were what you called lockdown robberies. There were people who were robbing, the, robbing people's homes. You know, I had neighbors share a couple of those experiences. And then around midnight at, at around, you know, Easter Sunday 2020, I heard, I began to hear, you know, sh sh shots of, you know, um, basically people knocking on doors, you know, brandishing cutlasses on the floor. It was just a lot of chaos. And I came out of my house that night and began to do videos. Those videos eventually went viral, was viewed by millions of people around Nigeria, right? So those videos basically showed lots of people holding cutlasses and patrolling the streets. I was scared at first, but I found out that these are my neighbors, the people that I know and greet and chat on WhatsApp. These are my neighbors who came out with cutlasses saying, we hear that people are robbing, so let's come out to protect ourselves. I saw my neighbor's fathers holding cutlasses as well. Guess what? Those, I mentioned that to you that those videos went viral. And later, I saw a blog caption it to say, one million boys patrol streets. No, that's dire. That's, you know, I know these people. These are my neighbors. So that's why I say from that experience I had, I will not jump into conclusion to say, oh, those are criminals. If you see, they were walking calmly right? And people were also walking calmly on the streets. They were not shooting at anybody. So just to be objective, based on my experience, I would say, let's do our digging and see who, why are those guys holding weapons? Are they holding weapons to say, oh, people are attacking people in the Southeast. People are burning police stations. Even though they have no, they have no excuse to ever put their hands on a gun. That is just also, extra. You mentioned that, you know, because... Oh, putting their hands on a gun is extra. But if... You know, they're saying, let's come out and protect our people because of this insecurity. That's one thing. If they are ungone known men, as they are called in the South, Southeast, if they are people who are there to attack people, that's another issue. So I'm saying, based on my experience, I will not jump into conclusion and condemn them, but there are two possibilities to the story. Yes, there is, you know, and I will give, I will give that, you know, but um, uh, first of all, you know, the, you know, the one of the videos, you know, where the guy was saying ungone known men. Yeah. Um, um, you know, I could also see people walking freely, you know, around these same people, you know, not the one where people were cheering on, you know, the, the, yeah, people were two walking guys walking freely with the them, yes. Some other guy just walking around. Um, not, they were not you know, harassing anybody, anybody, they were not shooting yeah, but, at but anybody. Yeah, they've but they've also never been attacking people. You know, all the while that we've heard about these are non gone men in the South, they've not been attacking people. They've been attacking police and, um, you know, facilities mm -hmm. and INEC offices. So, you know, I'm sure the people of the South already also know that they're not there for them, you know, and they don't really, you know, they're not a threat to mm -hmm. uh, the people in the South. And that's why they can easily walk around them and ignore them. Um, but of course, which society finds it normal, you know, that people just walk around carrying AK 47s? Terrible. That is very, very abnormal. I would, reason, I would never want excuse, to step out of the streets yeah, with somebody I, I, like that. Excuse that you around. want to have that, oh, you know, we're here to protect you. You are not a um, Mamotekun, you are not a um, um, And even mm -hmm. those people don't carry AK 47s and just walk around the streets. Mm -hmm. So these somehow, somewhere, are criminals. Um, whether you, you, know, you call them or no, what, um, gunmen or not, whether they're the ones who are attacking the police stations or not, they are still criminals. Why are these persons cheering them on? And so, once again, it's not going to be my role to go you know, and, and ask these people questions, who are you really? It's, nice, it's the responsibility of security agencies in the state See, who let people walk around the streets of Owerio, Enuku, Anambra, Abia, mm -hmm. carrying AK-47s. It's their responsibility. It all goes back to the failure of security in Nigeria. You know why? Remember when, um, what's his name now, Sunday Ogoho came up. You know, he went to a Fulani settlement. He caused havoc and all of that. And people were hailing him to say, yay, you're doing well. And I remember that we had lots of analysts on The Breakfast discuss this issue. And people talked about how when the people who are meant to protect you fail to do so, people will begin to resort to self-help. Mm -hmm. That's what we saw happen in Bo's period. That's what's happening now. So whether it's, no matter who you want to blame, the root cause is security. If you want to say, oh, but the security people have been attacked, the security agencies in Nigeria should be able to forestall such attacks on police stations. It's not weird to you that in the past few months they've been attacking police stations and those attacks continue to happen. 
Are you trying to say we don't have police stations, we don't have policemen, we don't have enough intelligence, we don't have enough, I don't know, is it, I just don't know what the excuse can be. Are you trying to say that our police force of, a, of an entire country, the most populous black nation in Africa, let's start from there, does not have enough firepower, intelligence, to combat a few criminals who stole a few weapons. It, does, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, well, so um, it, you could say these guys are resorting to self-help. You could say it, whatever it is, it is the failure of the police stations, of the police and security architecture in Nigeria, and that's, that's where we're going to start from, really. Well, um, let's, 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 hopefully, we, you know, we, we speak about this, you know, on you know, with more time on the breakfast sometime this week. Um, let's talk about the investment um, oh my. fraud. Oh a 21-year-old who, you know, of course, uh, is accused of uh, stealing as much as 28 billion naira hmm. after promising people see as much as 60% return on investment um, um, has, you know, been arrested. Um, you know, most of the people who, you know, also, also react to that story say, well, if you were foolish enough to put your money in a place that promises you 60% return on investment, mm -hmm. then, you know, you probably, you know, deserve to be scammed because that was almost, you know, a red flag um, immediately that, you know, showed up. Um, promise that, you know, I think the, the whole setup was meant to be investing in Forex and in oil and gas and some of all, the, all those sort of things. My only shocker, you know, with all of this is a 21-year-old? Hmm. A 21-year-old, at 21, I, I would not have those guts, you know, to take billions of naira from Nigerians. They say kids these days, uh, you know, uh, kids before, you give them 15 naira, they always say thank you. So kids these days, you don't send them money, send them Bitcoin. So, like, everything has changed, really. It is shocking for me, you know, that, you know, people can, at that age, already start thinking of fraud and ways to... Uh, I really have no idea, you know, how all of this started or where he, you know, got these ideas from. Um, but it's once again, um, you know, damaging on the credibility of a lot of the, you know, proper proper investment um, 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 setups and um, facilities that we that have exists, in Nigeria yes. and even outside the country. You know, we've been dealing with fraud and corruption and some mm -hmm. of all these things for too long. Um, and we don't need more of this. Yeah, so just a uh, quick update. His name is Dominic Joshua. And in October 2020, he had a feature on Business Day newspaper. Um, it, was, it was titled, Meet a Disruptor in the Investment Banking Industry. Very beautiful picture of him smiling. You can say, oh, wow. These are one of the guys who are taking over, you know, the financial technology space, the whatever space in Nigeria. And um, we see that there's a picture um, of him holding, you know, this uh, board by the EFC or the Nigerian Police Force, actually, not the EFCC. It's dated May 1st, 2021, but the picture just surfaced towards the end of, of, of May. It says, Special Fraud Units Lagos, Dominic Joshua and Gene, um, Offenses, Conspiracy, Investment Fraud, and Stealing. And this just reminds me of Invictor Sobi. You know, this guy was a Nigerian that everybody celebrated. He has been featured on Forbes. Do you know how big Forbes is? Yeah, sure, sure. And then he was discovered later to have committed financial fraud. And it's just such a, such a sad one for Nigeria. So it, it just makes us, uh, you know, goes back to our message that we had a few, a few weeks ago when people were saying, we invested in this platform. Now the lady has appeared. Now the guy has appeared. He made contributions to Christ Embassy. Just be careful when making financial decisions. Even the best financial advisors will tell you, Take this simply with a pinch of salt. Yeah. You know, the rest is up to you. And it's also great that we start to do, you know, better bang, uh, background checks on certain people that we want. Yes, to a newspaper on. feature on them is not is not guarantee yeah. that they're that they're flawless. So he, he named his his own setup uh, to be Brisk Capital Limited. You know, uh, you know, people asking questions back then saying, is this legit or a scam? Lots of people obviously say, oh, I tried it four months ago. I get my return on investment 30% every month. But, you know, you just have to be careful about these things and don't just jump into it because, you know, you have referrals and people saying, you know, this is fantastic. I'd rather put my money in the calabash. It's safer there. <laughs> or in a piggy bank. Yeah, no a literal piggy bank. Yeah, a little actual piggy bank. <laughs> My small money. <laughs> All right. Stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, Demola Kingbola will be joining us to have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today.